Today's video is sponsored by Safety Wing Nomad Insurance. This one shocked me at how low it was. Yeah, I was expecting that we were gonna have to pay a lot more money for this. Our heater broke, our awning broke. I lost my wedding ring. Most people at some time in their life have considered selling all their possessions, buying a van or an RV, and traveling the world while saving money. A common belief is that living in an RV is much cheaper than renting an apartment or a home. For the last two months, we've been trying to do RV life as cheap as possible. And today we're going to share with you the monthly cost of living in an RV to see if it's actually a more affordable way of living. Alright, so we have been living in our RV for almost two months, but we just completed our first full month of living in the RV, which was the month of May, and we decided we would write down and record everything we spent money on for the whole month, just to give us an idea of how much we're spending and whether or not like this actually is more affordable. We should probably be doing this all the time because it's the first time I've really been able to see like every cent we've really spent. Yeah, and it's been a lot easier to budget doing yeah. it this way. <laughs> so we we'll started off with the, probably the biggest expense for us, which is food. Our food bill for the month. Now all of this, um, I'm gonna be reading out in US dollars. I'm also gonna put the Canadian dollars and Australian dollars down below. We just had to pick a currency. And <laughs> because most of you watching are American, like 30%, I think. Yeah. The biggest number is US, so, and we're in the US. Um, we're gonna use US dollars, but in US dollars, we spent $760 on groceries for the whole month of May. It's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Like, you definitely spend a lot more if you're going out to eat, obviously, in America. One thing, like, I don't wanna go without is nice food. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't wanna be living in an RV, camping, and then, like, eating shitty food as well. Yeah, yeah, we cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We very rarely will go out while we're in the RV. While we're traveling overseas is a different story, but while we're in the RV, we like to cook flat out. So we spend a lot of money on groceries, which could be more than other people, um, but definitely something to keep in mind, as well as that you do have to go to the grocery store more often because you can't hold as much stuff in there, which might make it a little bit more expensive because you can't really buy in bulk. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, we probably go like every four days. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it's actually about, really annoying. <laughs> we get about four days worth of groceries and then we have to go back just to get a few things and we end up getting more. Yeah, it definitely makes you more mindful of like what you're buying and not wasting food. Um, but yeah, it's definitely our biggest expense. <laughs> yeah, I really don't like throwing out food ever, but especially in the RV, I just really notice like when we have some food, I want to use it up so we don't have to replace it with something else. But yeah. we cooked for ourselves every day, I'd say, except for maybe three days we went out. Three meals. Three meals. Yeah, which we didn't include like the extra stuff because we know obviously everyone has a different sort of routine and what they like doing and what you like to spend money on. We're gonna try and just give you the information that's relevant to the RV. Yeah, this is like bare minimum, like what do you need to get by? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So $760 on groceries. That's for the two of us and our dog Bear as well, yeah. which doesn't and cost cooking much to feed him. Every meal, so I think that's pretty good. We've tried going to like more affordable, like Walmart for groceries. Um, Winco is another one that seems to be really affordable. Winco's so really good too. Yeah, we like Winco. Um, we yeah, we've just been trying to do more affordable ways of doing things. You can obviously spend more if you're going to like Whole Foods, that type of thing, but you guys know that already. So the next expense, which is our second biggest cost uh, while we're in the RV, and this came as a bit of a surprise to me, is camping. When we first moved into the RV, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit worried because we were looking up camp spots. And we couldn't find much that was like free or cheap. And I started thinking, shit, are we gonna have to pay like 50, 60, 70 dollars a night mm. just to camp in this thing, which kind of defeats the purpose of living in it? Yeah, if, if you only go off of like Google and searching for a campground, um, uh, like the most expensive ones come up first. There is a lot of digging that you have to do in order to find like affordable places to camp or free. Um, but oftentimes the free and cheap places, you don't get a good sleep or it's just not as comfortable to be there as it would be in a, you know, a state park or an RV park, whatever you decide on. So 
yeah, we've definitely had to spend more on camping than we originally thought we would have to. Yeah, so we've spent for the month of May $700 on camping US. And we've slept in car parks quite a bit and f free camping as well. Um, yeah, I think we slept. That's the le like smallest we could get it to, which is pretty we crazy. We slept at Walmart twice, Cracker Barrel twice, um, and then a couple of other free camp spots. We found like there's a you either got a cheap campsite with no hookups. It's like twenty dollars, which we really love. Yeah. But sometimes they don't have like anywhere for like bear to run around or for us to like hang out outside. Like they're not very good. Mm. Um, and then like. The standard price for an RV park is at least $60. Yeah, which US, I, yeah. I didn't think it'd be that much. I was pretty surprised at that. Yeah, it's like at, at the end of it, you're pretty much paying the same amount for like a hotel because, you know, you've got to pay for your fuel and everything on top of it in the RV, maintaining the RV, and then you got to pay for the campsite on top of it. So, yeah, that's, that's absolute, a little bit disappointing. That's probably been the most disappointing part. Really. That's the absolute minimum. Like if you're in a town or a city and you want to see that city and you want to stay in an RV park, you're probably paying 80 $90 to stay in that park per night. Yeah. And that's just not really what we plan on doing. No, no, we've definitely not been able to hang out in cities as much as we thought at the beginning of this. That's when a van probably would have been better because parking's been an issue and um, yeah. Basically well, just parking has been the biggest issue, you can't park in cities. <laughs> we've got a few things working against us with cities, like we can't park this thing anywhere. It's really expensive to stay in RV parks and we have bear, we can't like just leave him in the RV when it's hot. Yeah. Um, so we've been spending most of our time at state parks and national parks because they're a bit cheaper. Around 30 bucks a night is pretty standard. Yeah. And um, they're actually really nice. Yeah. I highly recommend them. The problem is they're all booked out on weekends like year round. Yeah, that's been the other thing. A lot, a lot of time we float around and do things a lot more like day to day. So we can't really plan as far ahead as everyone else. But people tend to, yeah, because they're just coming out on the weekends, they book out the weekend and then we end up camping in Walmart or yeah. Cracker Barrel on the weekend because there's everywhere good is booked out. And yeah, we don't want to pay the money for a crap campsite I'd rather but then you get no sleep so it's kind of like <laughs> catch 22. <laughs> Our routine at the moment is pretty much get to a campsite on a Sunday or a Monday where it's where everyone's leaving and we stay there for a few days and then as it's booked out on the weekend we'll go travel or like stay at a Walmart or crack barrel or something yeah which is okay yeah. we only want to do that for like one or two nights a week because it's just not great. No it definitely gets you behind and sleep and just like feeling healthy and having a routine so yeah yeah all right, so this expense, like we can't really go without, and it's not too big, which is insurance. Uh, it's actually really cheap to insure an RV. Yeah, I, I was expecting probably three times the price what we're paying. Yeah, we pay, so for full comprehensive insurance on this RV, it's about $72 a month, which is like nothing. That covers us full comprehensive, like theft, collision, and third-party liability. I think there's about a $500 excess on that, which is okay, like mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, but that's like to cover the RV, which I don't know yet if we're covered, but we just lost our awning on the highway in Wyoming. Um, so that just covers us for the RV, like if we get into an accident, if it gets stolen or anything like that. But obviously, I'm from Australia, Mandy's from Canada, so we still have travel insurance while we travel. And that pretty much covers us for like any health issues that come up while we're in America. And that's pretty important because I know I've heard that American medical bills can go through the roof. Yeah, nightmare. So we pay a little bit extra for that, and that's $86 per person per month. But that gives us like complete peace of mind yeah. that if anything happens, one of us gets sick or into an accident, like that we're covered. Yeah. And that brings us to today's sponsor, which is Safety Wing. All right, guys, we're just going to give a quick shout out to Safety Wing for sponsoring today's video, as well as our entire trip throughout Canada and the United States. Thank you guys so much for supporting our channel. 
Safety Wing Nomad Insurance is a global travel medical insurance that covers people from all over the world while outside the home country, including COVID-19 coverage. It can be purchased while you're abroad, it covers home trip visits, and it can be purchased just like a monthly subscription. It's literally as easy as signing up to a Netflix subscription. We think that 99% of travelers would agree that purchasing health insurance while you're traveling overseas is probably the most important purchase you can make, especially if you're going for a long time. We've been insured by Safety Wing since the day we left Australia in 2021, and we would not go another day without them. It's given us the freedom and peace of mind knowing that if anything goes wrong, we're covered. And thankfully we have been covered because on more than one occasion, Safety Wing has got us out of some pretty sticky situations where we had to go to hospitals and visit doctor's surgeries while we were overseas and we had no idea if we were gonna get refunded or compensated for all the bills that we had to pay. Luckily, Safety Wing had our backs and since then we haven't looked back. But not only do they cover us for medical bills, including COVID-19, but we're also covered for any loss of luggage or personal items, airline delays, and even things like natural disasters and personal liability. With coverage starting at as low as $45 a month, it's a no-brainer for anyone traveling overseas for an extended period of time. And probably the best part about Safety Wing Nomad Insurance is that there's no locking contract, so you can cancel it at any time with just a click of a button. We'll leave the link to Safety Wing in the description. All right, now back to the video. All right, so the next big expense, which is pretty obvious, is fuel. This thing is a guzzler. <laughs> yeah. But we've managed to like keep it pretty low just by not like traveling too fast. When we first drove this thing from where we bought it up to Whistler Mountain, I was pretty worried because I was like, wow, it's really expensive on fuel and we wanted to go to all these different places, like how much are we gonna be spending on fuel? Is this even gonna be worth it? But we only really do a big drive like once a week. Yeah. So it's like one tank of gas a week and we've spent $630 on fuel for the month of May, which isn't that bad. No, I thought the fuel would definitely be more expensive than the camping. <laughs> but, but like we've made it a point to not use too much fuel. Like once we go to a campsite, we stay there. Yeah. And we purposefully like only drive in the direction that we wanna head. But fuel's a lot cheaper in the US than it is in Canada, which surprised me. Yeah, I was really, really surprised by that. How much cheaper was it? It probably cost around $200 US to fill up um, in Canada, but in the US it's probably like $170, something like that. It's pretty good. Yeah, and that gets us about 600 kilometers, which isn't much, but when you're in a place like this, 600 kilometers actually gets you like pretty far. Like we can drive to Vegas from here. Yeah, that's the one thing we've loved about being in the US is like every state that you go to is like going to another country. So we're seeing so much different stuff when you're not even traveling that far. Yeah, you don't need to travel that far to see different things. Yeah. Like we were just in Yellowstone a couple of days ago and it was like snow-capped mountains, thick, lush trees. And now we're like, feel like we're in the desert <laughs> at Salt Lake City and it's completely different. And then so cool. we're just like a four hour drive from Las Vegas, which is not even a full tank of gas. So. So the next cost that you'll have if you're living in an RV is dumping. So dumping your gray or black tanks. For us, a lot of the campgrounds that we've stayed at have had dumping. We don't usually pay for full hookups. We've only done that a handful of times. Um, but a lot of the campgrounds will have a dumping station that's included if you're already staying there. And then if you're not staying, it's like five or $10 like that. But um, sometimes at the beginning when we weren't planning it <laughs> very well, we had to pay a couple times at petrol stations and that was about $10 each time. So we spent about $20 for the month on dumping, which is pretty good. You don't really have to worry about it. If you plan it in advance, you can do it at free places and you don't have to pay for it. If we ever stay at a campground like this one, we'll always dump before we leave yeah. so that we can just get it out of the way. And then if we're on the road for a few days and we don't have a dumping station, we don't have to pay for one. But we have had a couple of times where we ran into problems and <laughs> yeah. it was full and we had to pay. Yeah, we were still learning. We're getting better at it. <laughs> this one shocked me at how low it was. Yeah, I was expecting that we were gonna have to pay a lot more money for this. <laughs> yeah, we've spent $30 on propane gas which keeps our fridge running, we cook on it, um, our water heater when we want to have a hot shower, which isn't very often. No. And also our heater, which doesn't work anymore. <laughs> That's probably why it's so cheap. Yeah, speaking of things not working, 
This brings us to our last thing, which we didn't really put an amount on this because it's going to be different for each individual person. Uh, but like Lloyd mentioned, our awning got destroyed. So that's an unexpected expense that we weren't planning on having to pay. A new awning is going to be around $1,000 we've seen. Um, without labor, we aren't really sure how much it's going to cost for somebody to install it for us. So the thing about RV life that you just can't really put a number on is the things that are going to break and that you're going to have to fix. Lloyd put it into a great way for me was that these things are designed for people to use them on weekends and very infrequently, not exactly live in them. So especially for us in the old ones, things get run down, you're using them a lot more than they were designed to be used for, so things just break. That's just how it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it doesn't, might not seem like it, but this is a vintage RV, it's 25 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, it's it's been great to us, but there are a lot of unexpected things that break that you're going to have to figure out how to fix and pay for. Um, the bigger your rig, the more expensive your rig is, you know, tires get more expensive, that type of thing. Um, so the unexpected expenses, our heater broke, our <laughs> awning broke. Um, those are the things that definitely make it not cheaper than an apartment. But that being said, apartments have issues that happen and come up as well, so. Yep. Well, in the month of May, we had <laughs> our heater stopped working, which was actually good timing because it was warm. Uh, the awning broke, the camera. Yeah, we, we had, had to get to a, new a new camera. camera that yep. broke. And when I was on top of the roof in 100 mile an hour winds, cutting the awning from its cylinder, I lost my wedding ring. So we need to buy a new one of yeah. them too. Luckily it was cheap though. Yeah. Bought it in Mexico for like 50 bucks. Yeah, because we knew something like this would happen. Yeah. I'll probably have like 10 of them over the years. Okay, so without all the extra added expenses that you can't really account for, we spent about... $2,400 US without all the extra things that went wrong. So if we were to suggest, that's a pretty good budget, $2,400 US. We suggest maybe adding 500 to $1,000 for a wiggle room for things to go wrong and to break. Just over $3,000 would be really safe, I reckon. Yeah. And that's like, including maintenance stuff, like we're gonna have to put new tires on this, get an oil change done, probably fix a couple of things, like just over $3,000, that's plenty. Yeah, I think so. Which for two people, like, that's not much. No, and that's like all of our expenses, really. Like, there's a few things we didn't include, like going and getting coffee or having a beer at the pub or whatever, but... Yeah, living expenses. Yeah. So depending on what your budget is living in an apartment or at a home, this is what it's cost us to live frugally in an RV but get to see a lot of America and Canada. It's been incredible, a really big learning experience. We've been uncomfortable quite a bit, but also have, I've just gained a lot from it, I feel like. Yeah, do you think that's too much? We're spending too much in the RV or is that really cheap? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. And if you have any tips for us or other RV lifers, let us know in the comments as well. Hope this video has been helpful. Let us know if you're going to start your RV life journey soon. We are also doing a group trip to Vietnam in November. If you're interested in joining us, we'll leave the link down in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.